Welcome back to Armed Lutheran Radio. You know, inspiration comes when you least expect it. And this week it came from another podcast. I was um, listening to one of my favorites. It's the Table Talk Radio podcast. Some of you confessional Lutherans in the audience may have heard of it. It's one of my personal favorites. If you haven't heard it, I would definitely recommend it. One of the co-hosts is Pastor Brian Wolfmuller of Hope Lutheran Church in Aurora, Colorado. And Pastor Wolfmuller was speaking at last year's Steadfast Lutherans Conference in Naperville, Illinois. And his presentation was on the obligation and temptation of dealing with false teaching. You may wonder, well, what does that have to do with gun rights and what does that have to do with my show? Well, it's an excellent presentation in and of itself. If you've never heard it, look it up on YouTube. I will uh, link to it in the show notes. Um, He reads in that presentation about midway through a verse from Galatians chapter 6, where Paul writes, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. That reminded me of a piece that I wrote back in February of 2013. It was in response to an article from Caleb Giddings at Gun Nuts Media where he had expressed frustration in engaging anti-gunners in online debates. His article was entitled, Is Talking to Anti-Gun People a Waste of Time? And Caleb wrote uh, this rather provocative couple of sentences. I don't really get why a person would want to engage with anti-gun people online. There are much better things to do with your time, it would seem, like debating stopping power, Glock versus 1911, or pounding a nail through your penis. Well, my my response in an article called Pounding Nails was essentially that we should not engage these people in an effort to actually change the minds of the anti-gunners, but that we should be doing it with an eye towards those who might be reading our conversations. The people who are undecided about gun rights, but who are intellectually curious. And here's what I wrote. It's estimated there is a gun in nearly half of all American households. That means that half of American households do not have a gun. Some of those households are anti-gun and unreachable. But some percentage of those households are ambivalent or uninformed. Your voice, your words, in blogs, tweets, and comments may be the only pro-gun voice they hear. Those people can be reached as long as we do it the right way. While I sympathize with and often share Caleb's frustration, I'm afraid that if we cede the battlefield to our opponents, we will lose the war. We need gun rights evangelists to spread the word, not with the goal of converting die-hard anti-gunners, but with the goal of countering the lies of our enemies with facts, logic, and reason. To quote Matthew 9, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. In this verse from Matthew 9, Christ is talking about spreading the word, his word, sharing the gospels, the good news, with a world that is hungering for salvation. The harvest is plentiful because there are countless numbers of people who have not heard the word, who are destined for damnation. The laborers, Christ's disciples, are few, and Christ urges those who hear him to pray that more people follow him and go out into the world, sharing his good news of salvation and redemption. Like Christ's call for disciples of his gospel, we need people to be disciples of the Constitution and gun rights. And in that article, I offered some advice on how we should engage in those debates. We should correct every error. I think um, uh, 
Tom Gresham calls it the truth squad. Don't let any lie go uncorrected. Um, have the facts at hand. Make sure that you, if you're going to get into this, that you have your facts straight. Avoid bravado. Avoid name calling. And that's the real that's the real trick. You've got to avoid stooping to their level. If your intention is to be an evangelist for gun rights, I wrote at the time, bring stats, common sense, and a hard hat because you're going to get plenty of abuse. You will be accused of caring more about guns than children, caring more about gun company profits than about public safety, or thinking that you're Rambo. That's tame stuff. More likely, you'll be called crazy, moron, idiot, extremist, you'll be accused of killing kids or owning guns to compensate for small genitalia. Responses to your comments will be, at best, dripping with sarcasm and snark, if not downright insults. Your ideological opponents will resort to ad hominem attacks, trying to bait you into a flame war. The temptation will be to get sidetracked, responding to each insult. The temptation will be to get sidetracked and respond to each insult. That sentence that I wrote over two years ago brings me back to Pastor Wolf Mueller and Galatians chapter 6. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. There's that word again, tempted. Tempted to what? What temptation is Paul referring to, and what does it mean to us? What he's talking about is the temptation to anger. Pastor Wolf Mueller, in his presentation, paints a really vivid picture of of what anger does to us. Um, He compares anger to the anesthesia of dentistry. You know, that shot of Novocaine you get when you have dental work done. It stops you from feeling that one part of your mouth where the shot was administered and where the the dentist is going to work. Anger, he says, anesthetizes your conscience so you feel no pain when you lash out against the insulting anti-gunner, for example. You'd feel badly if you called your family or your friends libtard or moron or idiot You'd never do that to their face. But anger justifies your actions. It anesthetizes your conscience and allows you to stoop to the level of the anti-gunner. Here's how I finished my article in 2013. And it's, it's great advice that I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but it's, it's good advice that I think it's worth repeating. Because we do need people to get out there and to spread the good word and to engage people in the sewer that is Twitter. We need people like Linoge from Walls of the City. We need people like um, uh, Sean Sorrentino. We need people like like uh, Bob Owens who can get out there and who know the facts and can, can counter all the lies and the arguments. But we've got to be careful not to stoop to their level because as soon as you, you break that... You cross that line and you start calling people names, then you lose the argument and it devolves. They're going to they're gonna bring it first, right? The anti-gunners are going to, uh, they're going to call names first because they don't have the facts on their side. They don't have the truth on their side. So when they're confronted by a confident pro-gun voice, they're going to start calling you names. And that's just, that's just how it is. We have to deal with that. As soon as we return fire in favor in, in the same kind of way that they attack us, we've got to be mindful that the person that we're trying to reach is not that person that we're arguing with because they're not going to change their minds. The person we're trying to reach is the person who's on Twitter and they're scrolling through and they're reading the back and forth and they haven't quite made up their mind, and maybe they think they know what their position is on gun control, but they've never really heard 
a good argument in favor of gun rights. And your voice is the voice that's going to resound, that's going to reach them. And if they see you, I know it's not fair, but if they see you stoop to that level and start insulting the people that you're conversing with, then their minds will close. That picture of that they have of gun owners that they, they have partially painted in their minds of angry, of unreasonable, of extremist, you're going to fill in the blanks. We must be above reproach. If you stick to facts, reason, and logic, and avoid the inevitable temptation to call people names or respond to every insult, your character will be an example. The anti-gunners want to paint us as crazy killers. And if you engage in the online slap fights and answer insults with more insults, you'll confirm what the media and most liberals think of us. To quote Proverbs 25, If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heat burning coals on his head.